Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the recruiting special here in season six. And coming off of last week, I mean, it was ugly. We lost two quarterbacks, two, and we are still undefeated. We actually are a top five team right now, but we have to make up for these injuries. So in comes Ty Featherstone, and that's where we get started here in this recruiting special because now we start to think about quarterback. I mean, do we really need to recruit some guys and make sure that we are safe just in case of injury? Ty Featherstone has only attempted seven passes in his career. He's going to need to play probably for the rest of the season. We do have redshirt freshman Donovan Nash. I'm going to keep him redshirted. If I really need to use him, I will unredshirt him. But for now, he will stay redshirted in case of injury. I do have a couple of guys that played quarterback at the previous level, so high school or JUCO, particularly Edelman and Drackett. Now, just looking at our pipeline states, we have four, and we have five at the moment, actually, trying to retain them. And let's recruit more in the state of Illinois just to keep that but I want to kind of stretch our field out everywhere so we start at quarterback and this is where we left off last episode at quarterback and RJ Griffin is going to be one of the top quarterbacks in the nation now Justice Parrish is not interested in us so we have to go after the number two guy and he is interested in us now I kind of compare him to Matt Ryan he's a pure pocket quarterback he is from Texas we have unlocked recruiting everywhere now so all bets are off they have to be interested in us in preseason still and we will go after them but everywhere is on on limits so RJ Griffin is honestly a great arm talent I mean he's got the throw power he's got he can make every throw one thing that he can't do is run, though. His mobility is not good at all, and he is one of the best throws of the football, but really getting him on the pocket, getting him out of the pocket, is not his calling card. So I think we have a shot to get him. Right now we're sitting here at second on his list, but this guy has a rocket of an arm. You just see this throw right there. That is a touchdown. That's a 60-yard throw right on the money. He could have thrown it 70 yards if he really had to. Now we move down to the number three quarterback in the nation. This is incredible. This is, will be the best class we've seen. And John Porter is our guy here. He is a mobile guy. He doesn't have the arm that R.J. Griffin has, but he does get a lot of things done that, you know, R.J. Griffin can't do, like running the ball. He can definitely make things happen with his legs. And he's an All-American and proven winner. He has actually two state titles. As a sophomore, he was actually a quarterback on his high school roster and then he got a state championship as the quarterback last season now this season he's going for number three in a row that would be phenomenal now he can win that's one thing i love about him you know me i love to recruit those winners that win at the high school level and i think this guy is going to be great now a lot of these top guys they're looking to go to the sec so we are competing with florida but it's a two-man race between florida and us we'll see how well we do Florida is in the lead by maybe a little bit of a wide margin, but we're still in the race, so don't count us out. Now, looking at offensive line, who's going to be our number one recruit this year? And offensive line is definitely a spot where we need to get better at, and especially protecting the passer because you've seen a couple of injuries already, and we need to go after tackle. That's where we look at Nicholas Vanderham out of Grandview, Missouri. This guy is an awesome, awesome left tackle. And I think that this guy can protect, maybe even move over to right. You never know. Because right tackle is important because as a righty, we roll out to the right a little bit more than the left. So we will need a guy that can pass protect. He is an amazing tackle. I think that he's got a bright future at the college level. Now we move over to running back. This is a position that it has become really, really important. Because remember that J.J. Hollinson is a junior. But if he has a big year, he could go to the NFL early. And that's where we look at Smokey Morris. He is a different type of running back than J.J. Hollinson. He doesn't really have the shiftiness. He doesn't have, like, the true quickness. He's all power. And one thing about him is that he he just doesn't go down. I mean, he just doesn't. Look at him. Just fighting through these tackles, getting into the end zone on that one. I mean, this guy is a tank. And he's going to be a different type of running back that we're used to. Jamari Tyson, I would compare him to, but Smokey Morris is a lot better than Jamari Tyson is. And Tyson, we actually got him some burn last year. And it kind of wasn't as 
planned. He didn't really show off like I thought he would, but Smokey Morris actually has a little bit of speed, not elite speed, but he has power, tough to take down. He's huge. Watch out for him because he could be a guy that could definitely make waves if we do get him and steal him away from these other SEC teams. That's very, very important. So let's move over to running back once again, and we go to Arkansas this time, and we look at St. Pierre. Now, this is a different running back than Smokey Moore. St. Pierre is a home run hitter. This is actually a game versus the number one defense in Arkansas, and he actually did a number on them. I mean, it was tough sledding for yardage, but he made it happen. I mean, he has great ball carrier vision. He's not going to be a guy that's going to run you over. He's going to be a guy that's shifty. He's going to make you miss. He's got home run speed, like I said. His vision is there, and his receiving skills are also there. So just remember Deion Carter. Remember when he was a good pass catcher out of the backfield, and we haven't really had that since then. Joe Bashai is the closest, but Joe Bashai isn't really that home run threat. And I think that, you know, this guy is – definitely a guy if we get him he could be a home run threat for our offense now let's move over to defense a little bit now this is a offensive heavy recruiting class but we have a couple of defensive players who i think will make a difference one is jalen reed a guy that honestly doesn't make a ton of tackles but he is just a game wrecker that's what i call him i mean his pursuit is unmatched he gets after the football and honestly the defense just knows where he is on the field at all times i mean just look at him here his effort is there his pursuit is there his athleticism is there he may not always have the biggest stat line but you know if you're around him he will open up holes for you open up plays for you allow you to make plays he just forces quarterbacks into uncomfortable throws look at this one the quarterback just knows where he's at and he just makes a terrible throw. I mean, that's the type of play that you want. He's in the backfield on every run. He's in the backfield on every pass. I mean, he is relentless. His effort level is always there on every play. Now, maybe let's take a look at a guy that may benefit from a guy like Jalen Reed. This is Speck Myers, a five-star linebacker, the number one linebacker in the nation. You see a trend here. We are starting to get these top recruits, these five stars, these four stars, these very high quality three stars. I mean, that's what is happening here in this program. You can see the transformation here in season six. And this guy is just amazing. I mean, he can cover the entire field coverage, sideline to sideline speed. I mean, this guy does it all. I am excited for him because we don't really have that guy right now that that kind of cover sideline and sideline like Brian York kind of does. Odin Blue was so good last year, and we just did not have that this year. The, the, a second guy on the defensive side that really did that. I think that right now Brian York is the only guy, so getting him will be crucial. So you know me, I love to recruit tight ends, and that's where we look at Osiris Tucker, an athletic tight end. And I recruited Carter Garrison two years ago. I recruited Chance Watkins last year. But Carter Garrison could very well, he's six foot ten. he can move to the offensive line. So if we do that, we'll need another tight end. And Osiris uh, Tucker is going to be a guy that really, really makes a difference in the passing game. His route running sets him apart. And him and Chance Watkins, I think, could be an awesome one-two combo. He's a receiver in a tight end's body. So, looking at our recruiting board now, last episode I highlighted Julian Quintero, and unfortunately he does commit to Tennessee. This was unexpected. He was actually one of my guys that I had at the top of my board as an elite pass rusher. We do have some good pass rushers, but nobody that's elite. So I wanted one, but, but Quintero does commit to Tennessee. Now, looking at our full board, Justice Parrish is the number one quarterback in the nation. I'm not going after him because he is fully invested in East Gotham, it seems like. He is a dual-threat quarterback, five-star. It's between them and Tulsa State. I was very, very surprised to see Tulsa State up there. If Tulsa State were to grab him, man, could that turn that program around. Now, Nicholas Vanderham is definitely our number one recruit because we need tackles so badly. And... The thing about going after such such high recruits now is that we have the competition now. So it's no longer going to be a shoe in to get you guys as your custom recruits and get you guys as commits. It's going to be a battle. 
St. Pierre is going to be number three, just ahead of Smokey Morris. And the reason why that is is because I think that St. Pierre provides a much better fit for our offense. And looking at him, we are ahead of Missouri Tech by 700 points. So taking him away from these rivals is definitely crucial. We don't want him to go to Texas A&M. That triple option offense and St. Pierre with that elite speed could be a problem. Now, Smokey Morris is interested in Texas A&M and Ole Miss, two teams that were actually ranked in the top 10 when we played them last season. So this is going to be interesting. Smokey Morris is a five-star power back. I'm holding on hope that he will still eventually keep us on his list, but it looks like we are behind the projected cutoff. It's hard to recruit when you are going after multiple five-star prospects. They won't always be interested in our school. Now, defensive back has been an issue. And one guy I want to look at is Xavier Hawkins, six foot four. He is a six foot four cornerback. He is lanky and he can run with a lot of guys. He has the length, he has the coverage skills. His zone coverage is a little low, but I think his man is his calling card. It will allow us to play more man coverage, something I've been wanting to do and something I can't do this year, really, because we've been struggling. DJ Durrell Jr. on the outside has been struggling. Uh, D'Roberto has been doing all right, but uh, but Derek Bomaye playing in the slot more than likely because his man coverage is so bad, but his zone coverage is good. So I think I'm going to keep him in that nickel spot. Now, hopefully we get Xavier Hawkins and Jalen Reed because Jalen Reed, like I said, is a game wrecker. I mean, he just gets after the football. You see his power moves at a B, pursuit is at a B, block shedding is at a C. I mean, this is going to be a really good uh, linebacker for us. Maybe even a guy that can move over to safety sometimes. He is the number six outside linebacker in the nation. Now, let's move over to safety, a true one, and Donovan Jensen. Now, this guy is a very good box safety he will get up in your face he will play on the line now his coverage is definitely a uh, misstep of his but look where he's going Oklahoma Missouri and St. Louis State I mean if we can steal him away from these two schools it would be amazing he is the number one strong safety in the nation now D Barbosa is a guy that I really really want six foot eight three hundred and ten pounds I have no idea why Middle Tennessee is on his list, but it seems like it's just a two-team race at this point. Alabama and us. Now, we have a visit coming up with him before Alabama, and I'm hoping that that game will propel him to commit on the spot and jump Alabama because if Alabama gets a hold of this guy, he's going to be a playmaker for them. Now, he is huge, and I mean huge, six foot eight, three ten. I mean, that is just playmaker written all over you and honestly we're losing JJ Taylor more than likely next year so it's gonna be an interesting uh kind of battle there at that nose tackle position we don't really have anybody that's a shoe in there now Speck Myers is a very good coverage linebacker 84 zone we have not had a zone cover linebacker like this since Odin Blue Odin Blue was a really good coverage linebacker and getting Speck Myers he could definitely make plays on the defensive side of the ball. He's a number one, but a linebacker in the nation. Hopefully, we will be in the running for him when it's all said and done. Now, a couple of running backs I did not highlight. Noah Hogard is another home run hitter now. He is kind of a smaller back, and he and Benjamin Duke are both kind of cut from the same cloth and kind of both guys that will be third down running backs. You'll see them even in maybe even in the return game a little bit. And looking at him, he's got speed. I want to get that speed at running back. You see how much of a difference it is for Hollinson. But I want some big-time plays, and I think that Hogard and Benjamin Duke can provide that. Now, we are down by a lot of points for both of these guys, but I'm going to go all in on both of them and see if I can get them. And you never know what can happen with St. Pierre and uh, our other top running backs on the board. But I think that, you know, if we do try at him, we can stay in the running, push it to the offseason, hopefully. We'll have to see because a lot of these guys are looking to commit pretty early in this process. It's only week four at this point. We're on our bye week. Now, moving down the board, I think Osiris Tucker is going to be an awesome, awesome addition to the uh, offense just because look at his catching rating. Look at his route running. Look at his release. I mean, this is a guy that is going to just be a mismatch nightmare for linebackers. 
And he can move a little bit, too. He's got the speed. I think that speed is going to end up being in the 80s somewhere. He's six foot five, 245. Two. I mean, he's got size. He's got speed. The good thing is he's not looking anywhere but us. I mean, Wisconsin is number two, but it's not even close. I think that we can pencil Osiris Tucker in as a commit right now. He'll eventually get there. Now, we went after a fullback because, remember, next season we have to cycle through the playbooks once again. This is our second season in this playbook, so we might have a different-looking offense. We have no idea what offense we will get. So I'm going to go after Bob Boys. Now, I don't think it's fair that uh, we actually got kind of shut out here because we're putting on max points on him, and I'm going to unlock the door. I only do this on one prospect a year. So Bob Boys will be the guy I will unlock and we will move up on him, but I still don't have any points to put towards him, so who knows if that's even going to work. Now, we highlighted RJ Griffin and John Porter, two top quarterbacks in the nation. We actually have th both, all three on our board right now, but only going after two. Now, RJ Griffin has the big arm, and he really – is a pocket passer. I mean, you can see the speed, only 58. I mean, if you see Ty Featherstone play next week, you might get a preview of what RJ Griffin could be. Now, he's got a whole lot of suitors. I have no idea if we even have a shot at getting him. But we're going to put him on a visit. And honestly, I prefer him over John Porter. And it's because of that arm. I mean, 94 throw power. We do not have anybody with that type of throw power. We do have Dun Carmichael, but he doesn't even have that strong of an arm now John Porter is more of a mobile quarterback and the thing about him is that you know he is from PA he does have the championship pedigree and that's one thing that I do admire about him now it's a two-way race between us and Florida this is a much closer race than RJ Griffin I think that there's so many teams going after RJ Griffin that we may not have a chance with him and we may have to settle for John Porter he's six foot though that kind of worries me a little bit. I had a ton of tip passes at the line when I played with Gunnar Johnson, and that's one thing that I did not show too much, but I did. I had a ton of them, and getting the passes over the line is going to be an issue, I think, with a guy that's maybe six foot or shorter. I guess we'll have to see. I don't really know. Now, Chris Brooks is an interesting athlete. He is a defensive back. He will be renamed to one of you guys. He is honestly a very very intriguing prospect you see the play recognition at b man coverage at b zone coverage at b i mean it's going to be interesting i want to see what he's going to turn into now a couple of guys to round out our board we're not really in the running with brandon moore but we do need that offensive line so we're going to go after a couple of these guys that are interested in us and i'm going to wait until some of the points are freed up a little bit and then start to add some points to these guys hopefully we get some commits soon so that we can go after these guys but andrew lane at the bottom is a guy that i'm really intrigued with he's a center and he looks like he's going to be a pretty good prospect so i'm excited about him and then at the bottom here we need to keep tennessee as a pipeline so why not go after defensive tackle because remember we could be losing jj taylor next year so it's going to be interesting seeing some of these guys Kind of cycle into the fold he will be a guy that's renamed to one of you guys as well so let's just recap our full board here nicholas vanderham is at the top st pierre and Smokey morris they're our top two running backs i really want savior hawkins though i think that he's a guy that is really high on my board for a reason and the reason why i kind of have him at number five right now is because i think that tackle is a big position of need right now we need to replace our man J.J. Hollinson, if he goes to the NFL next season, there is a big possibility of that because he is having himself an awesome start to this year. Donovan Jensen at safety. I'm definitely going to need to get a safety that's going to eventually replace Jacob Dracken. I think that Dracken is an underrated guy on this defense. And then we have an injury at free safety, so we have no idea what we're going to do there. We do have some guys that can play safety. I'm not really too concerned with safety. Cornerback is probably my biggest concern on the defense right now. So let's just look at some of the stats here uh, as we head into conference play next week and we take on texas a and m and remember they run that triple option offense but we will not have our starting quarterbacks at all ty featherstone is a different different very very different quarterback than we've had even phoenix frazier moved around a little bit and you know it's just a fact that ty featherstone just can't run jj hollinson we're gonna have to lean on him he's got eight touchdowns this season 
already close to his season totals two years the last two years i mean this guy is a tank i'm hoping that one day he will be recognized nationally and i think it's coming soon once we face another sec team i mean we're number five in the nation we should be getting that recognition now looking at receiving wise it's been interesting because now that dunn carmichael is hurt it could hurt storm a little bit i think that his production could dip but who knows what Featherstone's going to bring? I mean, what, who's to say that Featherstone won't get into the game and just kill it? I mean, there's a there's a huge possibility that Featherstone could just take the reins and never give it back. That's definitely a thing as well. Our offensive line is really blocking well for the run. Hopefully, we can do well for the pass because if we do not keep Ty Featherstone upright, we're going to be in trouble. Donovan Nash will have to get the call then. And then looking at defensive wise, we're doing extremely well stopping the run. Our defensive line is so good this year. Dominique Edwards, Jermaine Neal, and JJ Taylor. This actually might be the best defensive line we've had in this series. And then looking at our linebackers, Jake Braun, Osiah Caesar, and then also our captain, Brian York. Those three guys are so good at linebacker. I think that our run defense is our one of our biggest strengths on the team. In our secondary, it's definitely our biggest weakness. I think that in our offensive line, I've been saying. And let's see if our team can come up with some turnovers. Maybe we need to send more blitzes so that our uh, cornerbacks get put in one-on-one -on -one situations where they can make plays. Now, going into next week, I will be making a change at kick return. Trey Frazier will move there. And it's simply because now with all these injuries, I can't afford to have another injury, especially to Zane Storm. And I'm going to put Trey Frazier at kick returner. He's already been at punt returner, and I'm just going to move him over there to the full-time kick returner. Save Zane Storm some energy as well because he does get tired pretty quickly. So that will be a change that I will make next week. Now, Indiana, for some reason, is ranked to the top top five we are sitting here at number five usc at number three and then alabama sitting there at number two so honestly if we just win more games we will move up here in the top five i don't expect indiana to stay there we are sitting here in the middle of our conference a lot of teams have played conference games already we haven't you see alabama is undefeated in conference metropolis is two hopefully they're coming off of a bounce back year they have roy toth at running back they're gonna be a tough team missouri tech they're just struggling once again and so is Tulsa State. We'll see how they do in the future. Now, J.J. Hollinson is still not on the Heisman list, but one more big game, and he could be there. We'll see next week as we take on Texas A&M. Remember, they run that triple option offense, but no more chance Tyree. So this is going to be interesting. I don't know how they're going to hold up without that superstar quarterback. We'll have to see. They also have the number three defense in the nation, so this will be interesting. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Hope you guys enjoy the recruiting special. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, hey, filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on...